What's up, dude? When I was growing up, I absolutely loved Hot Pockets. However, it's been about 10 years since I've actually even eaten one. I'm gonna taste two of their most popular flavors today, chicken bacon ranch and Philly cheesesteak, and then I'm gonna see if it's worth the time and the money to make your own dough, make your own filling, and make them at home. And as always, there is no time to waste. Now let's go, let's go! All right, here I have some Hot Pockets, and these are the two flavors we're gonna be making. We're doing Philly steak and cheese and chicken bacon ranch. Let's have a look at these ingredients for a moment because this is insane. Wheat flour, walted barley flour, Niacin iron, I am one quarter of the way through the ingredients. This is absolutely insane. By all means, if you want to just go out and buy a sheet of frozen puff pastry and make it that way, that is absolutely fine. However, I'm going to show you how to make a short crust pastry that is ideal for savory fillings. It's easy to make. The recipe will be in the description. All purpose flour, and I'm just adding some fine salt, a little pinch of caster sugar, and a whole bunch of cold unsalted butter. And this is a pastry cutter I just had in the freezer. We're gonna use this to cut the butter into the flour. And you can use your fingertips to do this as well. You just want your hands to be kind of cold. People sometimes dip their fingers into ice water. We're just trying to keep our pastry cold. And I'm gonna keep breaking this up until we get a fine kind of crumb. Just keep working it and breaking it into smaller little pieces. And it will only take a few minutes to bring this together. Now we're gonna add beaten egg as well as some whole milk. And this is what's really gonna bring our dough together. I'm first gonna mix it in the bowl like so. And right away you'll see it coming together. At this point we can dump that out and with the hands just bring this dough together. If it begins sticking to your surface you can always add a little bit of flour just lightly. These little pastry cutters are great for scraping up all those little bits and it's as easy as that my friends that took no longer than five six minutes to make so why not give it a shot. All you need to do now is let it rest. You can't use this dough right away so we'll take some plastic wrap or cling film if you're from the UK that's what they call it there and we want to make this a little bit flat one big piece like that. Wrap on top into the fridge it goes for two hours to rest. But while that happens, let's make our filling for the Hot Pockets. For the base of both of these Hot Pockets, we're gonna be using a bechamel sauce. It's a great thing to learn how to make. We're gonna do it right now. Eight ounces of unsalted butter or 225 grams. These companies are ripping us off 7.95 ounces. Think how many billions they're saving per year. And for a roux, you wanna go double the amount of flour to butter, except I like to do a little bit less than that. So eight ounces of butter, you would go 16, but I'm gonna go 14. First, heat up your whole milk until a skin forms right on the top, you're just gonna scald it. While that's happening, melt your butter over medium heat. Once the butter melts, drop in your flour and go ahead and just mix that in. Cook this over medium low heat for about eight minutes. A big mistake I see people making with roux is they just mix the butter and the flour and then they use it right away. You need to cook out the flour and you will smell it change in your kitchen. It will smell sort of like cooked cookies. It smells really good. Eight minutes has elapsed, our milk is scalded. We'll start adding a couple ladles at a time. The trick to this is going to be to really work it after every single addition of milk so you end up with a really smooth sauce. Once the first batch is all worked in, add some more. At this point too, you can turn the heat up to a little over medium and just keep working. Keep adding your milk little by little and you will see it start to finally loosen up and turn into a really smooth and creamy sauce. My arm's getting a little tired. I'm gonna have Marcus stir. And I'll tell you what, my friends, this is pretty brutal. Keep going, Marcus. <laughs> is that tough or what, man? I was thinking you were weak. It's or, cement. Yeah, yeah, he, th he thought he thinks cooks are weak. Remember this man's face. So we have to remember, here's the consistency now. Really, really, really thick. However, we're gonna need to cool this down before rebaking it inside the pastry and this is the consistency It's going to be when it's warmed back up. So we're just about there a couple more ladles of milk and We're good. Okay. There's my thickness We're gonna stop right there and separate this sauce in half for our two different flavored hot pockets Here I have the chicken bacon ranch hot pocket We're gonna see what hot pocket is made out of and I baked mine because well I'm fancy. Oh God. Here's what it looks like on the inside. A little bit sad if you ask me. Time to give it a bite. 150 ingredients. Here we go. The filling actually doesn't taste very bad, but the dough is just so, I don't know. It just sucks. It sucks. I don't know, Marcus, tell me what you think, man. Oh my God. I made it burnt my face. Oh, of course, dude. It's burning hot. It's okay. You like the dough? It's got weird flavors. There's something weird about it, right? I don't know. Well, Hot Pocket, not too bad. I would rate that yeah, 4.2 out of 10, but I think we can do it a little bit better than that. I'm just here looking at Hot Pocket's website and their description of the chicken bacon ranch Hot Pocket. And they say loads of bacon with white meat chicken, mozzarella, parmesan, asiago, and peppercorn ranch sauce. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's finish this sauce. For the chicken bacon ranch Hot Pocket, I'm gonna start with a whole chicken. Just gonna spray this thing down with a little bit of oil, just avocado oil. This is just a great way to cook a chicken. If you want really tender meat for a filling like I'm doing today, and all I'm doing is 
just hitting this everywhere with a little bit of flaky salt. And I'm putting a whole bunch inside as well. Let's get under the wings and everywhere, around the side of the leg, the back, just like that. I'm simply just gonna roast this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 50 minutes or until it reaches about 155 internal. In it goes. Here's our chicken after the 50 minutes, totally cooked. Now I'm gonna let this chill all the way down to room temp before picking the meat off the bone. If you wanna try this at home, you definitely don't need to roast a whole chicken. You could simply cook some breasts in a pan or poach them in a little stock. There are many faster ways to do it. I just love the tenderness and end result from roasting a whole chicken and picking the meat off. Okay, my chicken is completely cool now. I'm gonna start by taking off these legs. Let's find that joint, follow it around. Same deal over here. There she is. I'll then take off these little wings right here. Hot pocket. While I'm here around the back, let's get these oysters. Ooh, you see that? Ooh, they're the best. The back meat of a chicken is good stuff, my friends. Good stuff. Now, I don't need the skin for this, but I'll crisp that up in a pan and make a little snack with it, that's for sure. Now, usually I do this before roasting the chicken, but in here, whoop, is the wishbone. You see that? There it is in one piece. And you wanna take that out before slicing the breast because it's in the way. So let's get these breasts out. And this chicken has retained so much juice because I really let it cool down all the way. And with the breast, I'm gonna slice them into nice big chunks that are gonna fit inside my hot pocket dough. Just dropping this all into a bowl. And with the thighs and the legs, I'll again take off the skin, find that joint. It's right about there. Whoop, got it. And with the thigh meat, I'm just gonna pull it off into these large pieces like so. And again, just slice it this way into rough chunks. Does not need to be perfect. And we'll just repeat this process with our whole chicken. And there is all our chicken meat ready to be added to the filling. For the bacon, just tray it up on a sheet pan with parchment paper and bake at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or until nice and crispy like this. I've got half my mix here. It's nice and hot. I'll start by adding my mozzarella cheese, little by little. You don't want to work it in all at once. And there should be enough heat in this bechamel sauce to melt the cheese. But if not, you can just set it back on the stove on low heat for a minute or two to finish melting the cheese. Next, our Aussie, Aussie Agogo, Aussie, Aussie, yo, Aussie, Aussie Ago cheese. Same deal, work it in little by little. The flavor is really coming into this sauce now. And I know it seems really thick, but we need to be able to roll this up inside of a pastry. So it has to be. Last cheese we're adding is Parmesan. Same deal, little by little. We'll work that in. To get that ranch flavor, we're gonna be using some of this buttermilk dried ranch packet seasoning. This is my preferred ranch seasoning. I'll start by adding just half of my ranch packet. This stuff's pretty strong. I wanna make sure I don't over season it. And we'll work this in and give it a taste. You know what? It's a lot. Going for the whole packet. Going for the whole packet. It's gonna be fine. Should be a little bit flavored. God, that tastes good. Sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty. That's just black pepper. And as they recommend on the Hot Pocket website, we're gonna add a bunch of pepper. Our roasted chicken is now going in and we only have one last thing to add. But first, let's fold this all together. I got you, Hot Pocket. This is gonna be the best Hot Pocket ever. Our crispy bacon that I just chopped up into large chunks. Oh, we're just gonna mix all that bacon in and holy cow. Our chicken bacon ranch Hot Pocket filling is complete. And I'll tell you what, chicken bacon Ranch, the flavors are spot on. I cannot wait to try this inside of a freaking short crust pastry. All we need to do now is cool this down. So I'm getting it out of this pot into a vessel. I made enough of this to start my own hot pocket factory. You may want to reduce this by half if you don't want to make so much, but we don't waste food here. My cameraman Marcus will eat this out of a bucket with his hands. I'm going to make some grooves through there. That's just going to help it cool down a little bit quicker so the air can flow in. Seems like a little messy, but it will work. This will go into the fridge for an hour and a half, two hours, or just until completely cold. Here's our Philly cheesesteak hot pocket. And I'm curious in the comments, what were your favorite flavors? Because when I was a kid, before I started my whole cooking career, I freaking loved hot pockets. And one of my favorites was actually the cheeseburger one. I don't know why, it was so gross, but I loved it. So here we go. Gosh, this one is just looking so kind of sad. Where's all the filling? Kill me, kill me. <laughs> okay, this, I don't, it just seems like it needs more filling. Oh. This one is even worse for me. It just tastes like peppers and sadness and a little bit of a little bit of depression. Uh, yeah, it's just not it's just not good at all. Marcus, try this thing, man. This one was my favorite, so that hurt my feelings. This one sucks and I remember it wrong. Let me just take out some of the beef. God, it tastes like, dude, it tastes like dog food. Like I've tried dog food before. It tastes like, <laughs> it tastes why, like, why, what, I just what? wanted to see what it tasted like. For this specific Hot Pocket, I know we can do better. So let's make it. Here I am back on the Hot Pocket website. Nice website. The description for the Philly Steak and Cheese Hot Pocket goes as such. Savory beef. To me, that means mystery meat, right? Savory beef. Reduced fat mozzarella cheese, onions, and sauce. Hot Pocket also adds bell peppers to their mix, which certainly isn't authentic in a Philly Steak and Cheese, but we'll take that 
recommendation on that one. Couple of bell peppers for our Philly steak and cheese hot pocket. Those go under a high heat broiler until you see that skin begin to blacken. At this point, you wanna flip them over and do all the other sides. We'll put them in an airtight Tupperware container and just let them steam for 10 minutes. That'll make them really easy to peel. Just five or six minutes of broiling. And now the peppers are very, very easy to peel. I wouldn't recommend rinsing these. You wash off a lot of flavor if you do that. So just do your best to peel them like this. Actually, no problem at all. We'll just pop that top, slice it open just through one side of the skin, scrape out and remove all of the seeds, slice out the membrane and then cut into strips. The steak for our Philly cheese steak hot pockets, I'm using prime New York strip. Now, do you need to use prime New York strip? No, use something cheaper like top round, that'll be fine. I just had these and I froze them for 45 minutes. So they're gonna be really easy to slice thin and I'm just taking off a good bit of this fat cap. We don't need all of that in there. And then I'm gonna slice really thin and because they're half frozen, it's really easy to slice these into thin little pieces like this. Got a pan here over high heat for a couple of minutes, just adding a little bit of cooking oil. I'll drop in all my beef and we'll season that up with salt and pepper and we'll cook this down without very much color at all. Now Hot Pocket likes to leave its steak in big strips, but I'm going for that more Philly style. So I'm gonna chop this all up just using a spatula. Now that that's all chopped up quite nicely, I'll go ahead and remove that and I'll take the same pan here with just a little more oil and a little knob of butter and we'll add our chopped onions, more salt, more pepper and we'll cook these down over medium high heat until they're sort of translucent and soft with just a little bit of color on them. After about 10 minutes, my onions look good. I'll go ahead and dump them out along with the beef. Now the good company of Hot Pocket doesn't recommend using this kind of cheese, but we want that whiz-like consistency. So we're using some Velveeta. We're gonna make this whole thing orange and it's also gonna give us the texture that we want. So I'll start adding my Velveeta, just a few pieces at a time. And I'll work that in until it melts before adding more. And we'll repeat that same process with all of our cheese until we have this sort of light orange, beautiful texture. Let's add our steak and onions. Oh, oh my God. I'll also add the mozzarella at this point. There's enough heat in this pot to melt it nicely. And of course the peppers, which by the way, do not belong in a Philly cheesesteak, but I'm gonna use them because Hot Pocket recommends this one and we'll give it a shot. Time to give our filling a taste and see if it needs any more seasoning, which is the only thing we might need to do to it. That is quite Philly cheesesteaky, but it needs a little more salt and some more Sergeant Gilbert action, but it tastes great. Oh God, oh my, my arm. Okay, dumping it out. Oh my gosh, this one is thick. Oh, and into the fridge it goes to cool. Let's build these Hot Pockets, shall we? Just take a lightly floured work surface and place down your dough. Take a rolling pin and begin pushing out for the center, turning this thing as you go. Make sure to keep lightly flouring it if necessary. You do not want it to stick to your work surface. I'll also keep flipping it here and there just to make sure that side that's touching the surface does not stick. I'll then trim the edges to make this thing squared up and you can definitely save those to make more Hot Pockets out of. And finally, we just cut into rectangle sized pieces to build these pockets. Lay down your pastry on a sheet pan lined with parchment paper. Here I have a little egg wash that's just two egg yolks with a half teaspoon of water. And we're gonna lightly brush these on both sides here, starting with my chicken bacon ranch. One log of filling. Make sure to leave room all around the edges. Going over the top, that's why we wanted it a little bigger so we can close it off here. And with that egg wash, it should really stick. We almost wanna treat this like a little mini beef Wellington, so squeezing the air out like so. Going in with the beef filling. The only thing I wish I did a little differently here was add more beef and less filling, but it's okay. Still gonna be good. Go ahead and drop the lid on your beef, push the air out again. And now I'm gonna take a fork and just crimp it all the way around just to make sure this seals. We don't want our filling coming out. So really give it a good push, not all the way through, but you want it to be sealed. And then all I'm gonna do is take my knife and just trim this up a little bit, give it a cleaner look. And again, on all sides, there we have it. Same deal over here with your Philly cheesesteak. I'll brush the tops with more egg wash all the way around. And finally, a little bit of flaky salt sticking to that egg. That's just gonna make our pastry even better. The last thing we need to do is let these chill in the fridge for 10 or 15 minutes because we want that pastry to be really cold before going into the oven. Every time I make a YouTube video, my wife says the same thing. Why did you make so much food? And my answer is always, I don't know. In all seriousness, I worked in restaurants for 18 years and I just have this large amount thing in my head. I don't know, I can't get rid of it. However, in my defense, this is something you would make for a special occasion for a bunch of people, I would hope. But I went a little bit overboard because that is pretty ridiculous. The dough is chilled into the oven. They go at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Here they are, my friends. This is what we've been waiting for. They were in the oven for 30 minutes. And as you can see, the top of that pastry has this sort of volcanic lava-like crackly look that just looks incredible. We're gonna let them cool down for about 10 minutes and then finally give them a taste. Here's the moment of truth. Let's open up our chicken bacon ranch hot pocket and whoa my God, that looks freaking good. Oh my God. Chicken bacon ranch.
Dude, you can't even compare this to a Hot Pocket. This is absurd. Ah! Oh, the pastry is so good too. And here we go with the Philly cheesesteak slicing through and oh my friends, we have something we can treasure forever. Philly cheesesteak. Crazy. I might prefer the Philly cheesesteak even though I like the chicken bacon ranch filling more. Wow, I love these things. I love them. I love them. Okay, Marcus. Mm. Chicken bacon. It's hot. Here. Ah! Monster. Yeah, dude, be careful. I like Philly cheesesteak better. I know, right? It just works better in there. I don't know why. It's just so good. Mm -hmm. You know I love you in the mouth.